If you were to tell me in 2020 that I'd get to play my 2017 Zoo cards, I would have called you crazy. But then they released this card called Zeus and it changed everything. What's going on you guys? Slim here with a new deck profile, a new deck for the channel, a deck that I've been waiting to finally put together for you guys. And that deck is Zodiac. So for those of you that don't know, I actually played Zodiac Full Power Zoo back in 2017. I played it at YCS Seattle. It was crazy. It was back when we used the interrupted Kaiju Slumber build and all of that before, you know, the different versions of Zoo, uh, Fusion Sub Zoo, all that stuff happened. So I have been a fan of Zoo ever since it came out. And, you know, I went through those formats and then, you know, here we are now. And it feels amazing to finally play the Zodiac cards, the Zodiac cards again. So as always, if you guys are new here, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell you guys will be notified whenever i upload you guys also be notified when i stream over on twitch the links are in the description as always if you yourself want to build this deck and i highly suggest you do if you're a fan of zoo you just got to pick up the new cards please use my tcg player link in the description below a portion of what you spend they'll go back to the channel it helps me out and i really do appreciate it last but not least if you want to further support the channel uh consider joining my patreon I've got four awesome tiers nothing over ten dollars and just a lot of we have a lot of fun over there with exclusive content and awesome rewards now thought that out of the way you guys I'm so excited to profile this deck. One thing I'll tell you, all the zoo decks that you do see on YouTube, you are going to see a common theme with them. And the reason is, is because uh, the standard lists that have been put front, uh, put forward are very, very good. Uh, you don't have to overcomplicate this deck. And I think that's something I really like about this deck, especially in this format. Uh, the guy that won the PPG regional, you know, shout out to him, uh, basically set the blueprint as well and showed why, you know, a standard list is always the best way to go. Uh, I am going to be working on a Zodiac uh, Dogmatica list as well, but I wanted to start with pure zoo since we actually have actually never featured zoo on the channel at least my version of it so uh, hopefully you guys do enjoy it is very standard but uh, we'll get into it so of course we're gonna start with the zoo cards first so of course you've got your one wrap here it's at one it's like full card combo you've got your whip tails you've got your thorough blades and you've got your ram rams along with your one barrage because sadly it's at one and then your triple ten keys to search everything out now Honestly, I don't think anything will change here. Obviously, these aren't going to change. Um, you know, Barrage is crazy. Everything else is crazy. Uh, Ram Ram, I like three. We do play Desires in the deck, obviously. I've seen some lists play two, but I just think three is better. Like, you want to just see more zoo monsters. These are really all the zoos you would play. I don't play Bunny Blast. I don't play anything like that. I think this is all you need. This is, like, super standard. Whiptail's crazy. Rat, obviously, is full combo by itself. Thoroughblade is good, too. Can help you draw cards in Ram Ram. You know, you pop things with Dryad and Shock and I, and you do the combos. Everything's good. I really like uh, just this zoo lineup. I wouldn't change anything. Like I said, I like to max out on these guys because we are playing Desires. So, you know, uh, more consistency, the better. So that is the zoo package. Next, we have the hand trap package. Now, this is another reason I really like this deck, this format. So zoo is like a deck that can play a ton of hand traps because the engine itself is not that big it's very similar to decks like pure invoke decks like salomon grade all those decks that they have their core engine and then after that you don't have to play anything super flashy if you don't want to you're able to just uh bog it down with more hand traps which helps you combat your opponent and then especially if you're going second which is deck can go first or second going second you just go into your barbo you go into your zeus and the game is pretty much over after that so it's pretty crazy but for that reason the hand traps of choice are the best hand traps this format, which are three Nibiru, three Ash, three Veiler, and three Impermanent. So you'll notice something immediately. There is no Gamma. Uh, Gamma just wasn't that good in this deck because obviously you want to normal summon Rat. Uh, the only thing that honestly, like, if they, if they, if it would work out, is if they like Ash or did something near Barrage and you're able to chain the Gamma. But honestly, these were just the better hand traps to play. Imperm is obvious. It plays around triple tactics. Veiler is great. Ash is generic. Nibiru is for all the combo decks. The reason why I chose to go this route is this was the most standard route you could go with hand traps. I just like the versatility. Also, we are playing an engine in the extra deck that does require us uh, to want to be able to see a spellcaster. So Veiler is obvious. It's also very good about stopping Verde Anaconda because you guys already know they're going Verde. They're going for uh, they're going for Dragoon, and I mean we got to stop that. So all of these are very generic, very standard. I wouldn't change anything thing here i think that these are the perfect hand traps for this deck uh, the only other hand trap i did consider was phantasma i personally really like that card and maybe if the format uh shapes up that there's more link decks then maybe that'll be the route uh, that we go but if people pick up zodiac there's barely any links in this deck so it's not really gonna get as much value next i've got what i call the power spells 
So I am playing six pots. Now I've seen a lot of lists, uh, including the deck that won uh, that regional, only playing two Avarice. I myself, I was at 39 cards and I was thinking, you know, should I play the upstart? Should I play the Avarice? I realized, you know, after talking to a couple people that the life points kind of do matter. Like you kind of just want to end games with this deck as well. Uh, I like the three Avarice also because we are playing Desires. Avarice is great though. Like you get five card, five monsters in the grave so easily with zoo cards. So Avarice just helps you recycle everything and just keep going. So I really like that. Not only that, I think that, you know, since we are playing desires we at least want to hope to get to an avarice and so if we're playing two there's a higher chance that they might get banished we might not see them at least with the third copy i have a higher chance of seeing it so that's the reason why i played it you don't have to max out on pots if you don't want to i just felt that playing all six just felt correct i looked at all the other possible spell cards i could play the only other things i thought of was maybe playing some cosmic cyclones but i just felt like i valued the pots more in my personal opinion again that's my personal opinion for it so there's that those are the pot cards and part of the power spells and the last two power spells are just standard duster and and reborn i say standard because i feel every zoo list is going to play these there's no reason not to this is just really good against back row um cosmic cyclone uh, like you could argue for cosmic cyclone is better for the fact that it is a quick play however it only gets rid of one card whereas duster can just wipe everything but i mean to each his own we got to just see how the format plays out i know like i said the winner played a uh, cosmic in the main deck so that's something that we might have to visit uh, going forward but personally i really like uh the these cards and i i did keep the deck 40 cards and reborn is just obviously crazy so if they stop you you just reborn you just keep going so <clears throat> it's very very strong and duster like i said is just very good against the back row deck so that's it for like our power spells and then these are what i call the wild card so this is a new section of the deck profile you probably haven't really seen anything like this in the sense of calling it the wild cards when i say the wild cards i mean these are the cards that got added to the deck i had that i think just give the deck extra oomph uh, and they are the two copies of Alpha the Master of Beast and the one copy of Prankatops, along with the three copies of Solemn Strike. So personally, I thought Strike was always good in this deck. A lot of people thought it wasn't. I don't understand why. Like this card is just crazy. And I think now we're going to see that Strike is going to be the standard going forward. The card is nuts. Like literally Zeus and Strike breaks a whole board and ends the game uh soul soul fast and also like you like i said you can go first or second with this deck so going first you just set strike along with your setup dryden or your setup uh mega clops and they literally just can't play so strike is amazing uh these were the really cool cards that got added i did get this idea from the ppg list i saw that he played this ratio of the two uh, alpha with the one prank atop. so this gives you the option that when you go second you have answers uh zeus pl um, alpha plays amazing in the zoo deck because of all the beast warrior cards so this card gets a lot of mileage in this deck and i just like these options because like i said Whenever a deck can go first or second in the in Yu-Gi-Oh, I think it's just fantastic, and that's exactly what this deck does, and it does it the best. So, I personally am a huge fan of playing Alpha the Master of Beast and Pranky Tops in the main deck along with the Strike. So, that rounds out the 40 cards. Uh, if you guys don't have access to this card, you guys should pick this up. Pick this card up. I'm telling you guys right now. I feel that Alpha is basically another Pranky Tops, and like the more Pranky Tops you have access to, until we get more copies of Pranky Tops, the better your deck will be. So, that's why we uh, max out on that. Uh, it's good. I like the two one ratio. I would play three Alpha if Pranky Tops didn't exist, but we gotta play Pranky Tops. So that's it for the main deck. Forty cards. On to our extra deck real quick. I will start with the absolutely busted section. I literally call it the absolutely busted section. The two copies of Zeus and the one copy of Mega Clops. Um, <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking when they printed this like this is ridiculous like going second you literally just attack with barbo use barbo's effect attack they take 400 you slap this on it you say go and yeah, they they die because basically this card is so ridiculous not once per turn which is just absurd and i mean I, I, I re I'm like at a loss for words like this card is absolutely insane this card is the reason why Zoo came back and it's amazing what it does in this deck and I'm telling you if you're on the receiving end of this you're gonna feel it if you're playing this card yourself you're gonna feel it too because of how powerful it is and the Mega Clops I can't tell you how hard it is to out this card it's very hard to out this card in a lot of decks and you do it so easily literally what a uh, rat can do this by itself Ram Ram can do it by itself this card is absolutely insane so the I feel that like these were just like the just blowout cards in this deck what makes the deck so strong and i feel that they're very important to play both uh in this deck so uh the standard extra deck uh, my extra deck is identical to the guy who won because i honestly think he built the perfect extra deck like no lie i'm a huge fan of his extra deck so uh, i really like his ratios so 
Onto the zoo package, we got the two copies of Shaka 9, the two copies of Tiger Mortar, the two copies of Vorbo, the one copy of Dryden, and the one copy of Hanger Hammer Kong. These are all your zoo monsters. Uh, now, people have argued for maxing out a lot of these, like playing three Shaka 9, three Tiger Mortar. I don't know if people play three Vorbo. I don't think that's necessary. Dryden obviously is at one, and Hammer Kong isn't that good, but it's just an extra zoo name just to give you, you know, just like the extra materials as well as give you more avarice targets. So I like this ratio. I thought this was a very good ratio. Like I said, I know some people do like playing the third Shock and Nine and the third Tiger Mortar. By all means, uh, you know, this being the first build that we have on the channel, it may change as the format progresses. But for now, I wanted to keep it extremely standard because I myself am relearning Zoo. And of course, formats have changed, so it's not the same as it was back in 2017. But uh, I really like this ratio. I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, you won't feel like you're missing anything. Like I said, you can just add more Zoo cards if you want. And then just the, I guess you can call it kind of just like the other essential cards uh, that you can play in this deck is the Fiber, Selene, and Access Code Package. So we did play this finally in one of our other decks. Uh, this is just insane though in our... Uh in this deck just it, you can do it very easily some people say it doesn't come up that much but it does uh, actually come up a lot because you are able to just uh you know once you get to a tuner and like literally you make fiber then fiber celine celine the veiler and like literally you got access code and then i mean you just you just blow out the game with this so this is just another oh, another way to otk with the deck going second so i really like that option and the last card is the uh vespinato so this is b drill basically uh this is just a common uh that came out a, a rise uh, people are starting to catch wind of it. It's very strong. You just put it over one of your zoo cards. It's basically like a Gaia Charger. Card's really cool. It's a it's a neat little option. I think any option you can put in your deck to give yourself like an extra edge is always great. And I felt that it was definitely worthy of the 15th spot in the extra deck. But that is it, you guys. This is after three years, we're finally playing zoo again, and it's crazy. I really cannot believe that, you know, with the release of one card, like literally one card, with the release of this crazy card, we are able to play this deck uh, three years later. It's crazy, but let me know what you guys think of my build it's very standard like i said you're gonna see a lot of builds very similar online and that's perfectly fine like i think that shows like how powerful the deck is and how you really just don't want to mess with it that you know if you play the right ratios you know you can always change up your hand traps and stuff but i personally really like this uh approach it's been very consistent obviously with six pots you know the deck does stay consistent i really like it and if they release any more zoo cards i mean it's gonna be crazy but those are my thoughts on zoo let me know what you guys think i think it's easily one of the best decks in the format and i think we're going to see a lot of crazy stuff going forward with it but let me know what you guys think in the comments below and i will see you guys next time thank you for watching